Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my March wrap-up. And March was a crazy reading month for me. I read 23 books in the month of March. Like, who even am I? If you didn't know, 23 books is the most books that I've ever read within a month. Like, I was reading so many books this month. I did read a lot of audiobooks. I listened to 15 audiobooks out of the 23 this month, but I also was reading a lot of things physically, and there's just so much going on in the month of March. I did want to mention that I had four DNFs this month, which is not included in the 23 books that I read. I ended up DNFing uh, This Might Hurt by Stephanie Robel. I got about I don't know, 30 to 50 pages into this one before I just decided it was not for me. And then same goes for every other weekend. I'm kind of sad about this one because I've had it on my TBR for so long, but I got about 25% into the audiobook before I was like, this teenage girl is driving me absolutely fucking nuts. I also ended up DNFing this book called The Plotters. I got about 100 pages into this one before I DNFed it. I was reading it for a video, but then I decided to DNF. And then I also DNFed Hook, Line, and Sinker, which I am kind of sad about this one because this one was the sequel to It Happened One Summer romance that I was very excited for and then I got about 40% of the way in during the audiobook and I realized like I just I wasn't caring I just didn't care nothing about it was like screaming at me to pick it back up so I DNF'd. This month you know I had a lot going on in the month of March that I was trying to do like I started the month with a reading Korean thrillers and horrors reading vlog that I did that was super fun. I also did a sci-fi reading vlog this month which is unusual for me that was really fun and then I did a thriller reading vlog of like reading this entire series <laughs> that was like a five book thriller series and that was really fun. I've also been getting uh, like really into Korean culture lately and like Korean TV shows and Korean movies and Korean music and uh, this month I fell down the BTS rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> it all started with you know in my like Korean reading thrillers and horrors video that I did. I just reacted to one of BTS's albums you know I just like listened to it and thought it was like a good time and then I did a live show with my mom this month that was like watching their music videos and kind of reacting to their music videos and then I fell down the BTS rabbit hole if you know what I'm saying you watch one interview and then you watch you watch them all and I'm not gonna lie okay I freaking I love BTS I get the hype like they consume all of my thoughts lately like I just want to listen to their music I just want to watch their interviews I'm surprised I read as much as I did this month because I was consuming so much BTS content and if you're curious my bias is V like V is probably my bias but also Jungkook like He's he's right up there too, you know, I, I can't decide. But yeah, wow, BTS, um, it's taken over my life. So pray for me in April because I don't think I'm gonna be able to read much in April. And speaking of that, how sad is it kind of, or like it's bittersweet that this is gonna be the last wrap up that you'll see in this old apartment. Because if you didn't hear, I am moving in the month of April. I touched on it a little bit in the last monthly vlog that I posted. So I'll have that linked down below if you wanna know more about it, but it's bittersweet. I'm excited, but I'm also sad. And this is the last wrap up in this room that you'll see. Ooh. Anyways, so out of the 23 books that I read this month, the sad thing is that I didn't have any five stars. So like, that's a little bit of a bummer, but I did have four books that were about like a 4.5, you know, like they were close, but they weren't exactly five stars. And then I had six books that were four stars. I had seven books that were three stars, four books that were two stars, and I had one, one star this month. Ooh, it happened. And then I read 11 thrillers this month, which is like, what the fuck? 11? Um, I had three sci-fis, three romances, two young adult contemporaries, two adult contemporaries, Contemporaries and then one horror book, which is wild. I read so many thrillers this month, but I didn't read very much horror, which is rare for me. So yeah, let's just jump right into it, shall we? I also used my library a lot this month. I just want to say that. So like, I don't have a lot of the physical books with me. I was checking books out of the library, like left and right. And I love that for me. So the very first book that I read was for the video that I did at the start of the month, which was like the reading Korean thrillers and horror books. And the first book that I read was The Good Son. This one was a good time for the most part. This one was a really interesting book. It was about this young Korean boy who he wakes up in his home. He's not that young. I think he's like 20, 21 or something, but he wakes up in his home and he's like covered in blood and he doesn't know why or what's going on. And he like goes down the stairs and sees his mom is like dead and like brutally murdered in his home. And he's like confused because he's like, what is going on? How is this possible? And he doesn't have any memory of what happened the night before. This book was pretty intense. Um, This book, it actually kind of reminded me, like it gave me similar vibes of like You by Caroline Kepnes. Like if I had to compare it to something, it would definitely be that kind of vibe. I don't know. I just really liked the way this was written. I feel like this book isn't necessarily a who done it, but it's a why done it. You know what I mean? Like at least I saw that in so many reviews. Like I didn't make that up myself. Like I 
just saw so many people saying that and I would agree and this one I ended up giving four stars like it was a pretty good time and then I ended up listening to the audiobook for Made in Korea I actually listened to this one during that video as well even though it's not a thriller or horror but this one you know it's a young adult contemporary novel and it follows these two Korean teenagers who are in America and they both have these like small businesses where they sell Korean products into schools and so they're kind of like competing for sales and it's like this it's not like enemies to lovers like it's not that high stakes but like it is kind of like there's tension there because they're competing against each other for sales and this book was just so cute um I especially loved the guy Wes in this book because not only do I love the name Wes which I know it's so shallow but I love the name Wes like it's such a cute name also though because he plays saxophone in this book and he wants to pursue music which like I love that and also I played saxophone when I was in middle school so I was like relatable and I don't know I just thought it was so cute it was such a good time and it just had me smiling like I listened to this whole audiobook in one day and it was just like a really fun time so I ended up giving this one four stars too I also read Cursed Bunny for that video and this one was the only horror book that I read this month and this was a 4.5 out of 5 stars incredible amazing this one um if you didn't know it's kind of like a short story collection where they're not all horror apparently like some of them are horror most of them are horror but there is some like speculative fiction you know there's like some science fiction some realism stuff and I made a list in here like these are all the short stories that are in this collection and six out of the ten I absolutely loved this is probably like my favorite collection of short stories that I've ever read. I'm not a huge reader of like a bunch of short stories but I'm getting more into it you know and I feel like this book is definitely going to encourage me to want to read more books like this. The stories, the head and the embodiment and snare and scars, oof, oh my god they're so good. They're just so unique, so different. It's almost like Black Mirror vibes kind of in a way but like more on the horror side and I don't know I had a wonderful time reading this. This is definitely the book that's like staying on my mind the longest this month. And then the last book that I read for this video was Seven Years of Darkness. This was another Korean thriller from the same author as The Good Son but to be honest this one <laughs> like it stands out in my memory the least out of all the books I read for that video like I can barely even remember right now. I would definitely recommend The Good Son over this one. I mean this one is a thriller that's about this girl who she died in this reservoir and then we follow the point of view of these three men who were all kind of like involved that night and they all have like secrets about what happened but it ends up kind of being more of this like cat and mouse game between these men and it was just kind of boring in my opinion like I didn't love this one there was no like big reveals or anything like that either it was just kind of it was I don't know it was fine it was slow it just wasn't really my thing I ended up giving this one two stars and then I ended up finishing One Night on the Island by Josie Silver this is a romance book that I actually started reading in the month of February and then I ended up setting it aside because I decided I wanted to wait for the audiobook because for some reason I was just having trouble getting through this book physically like I just wasn't wanting to pick it up and so I thought the audiobook would help me push through it and it did help me finish the book but sadly I just wasn't a huge fan of this one. A romance book that follows these two strangers who they end up like double booking the same cottage and so they're gonna have to like stay the night there together you know it's very like it's one of my my favorite tropes in romance okay like I love the forced proximity you know the like accidental like oh no I guess we're gonna have to stay the night together like freaking love that live for it but there was just something about this book I just didn't care for it very much I feel like it is really probably the main protagonist like the main female protagonist in this book she just kind of I don't know I just wasn't a huge fan of her character like there's just something some disconnect there with me and her character I just didn't understand her and I don't know like there were certain moments in this book that I thought were cute but I was never like on board shipping it with my whole chest like none of that you know so I ended up giving this one two stars as well which how sad I wanted to love this so bad however the next book that I read was XOXO this is another young adult contemporary book this is one of my favorite young adult contemporary books that I've read in a very long time okay like this book reignited my love for young adult contemporary and made me feel like there's hope because I'm not a huge young adult reader these days you know and I feel like it's because most of the time I either feel too old to be reading them or I just don't really connect with them in the way that I used to but this one was so cute it was soft in every sense of the word and this one we're following this girl named Jenny who plays the cello 
and both of these characters are Korean in this book and they meet in Los Angeles at her uncle's karaoke bar which is like you know it's a super cute way that these characters meet. I adore it. And then uh, it kind of follows how she's going to be going to Korea for the summer to visit her grandmother. And so it's about how she didn't know that when she met when she met this guy back in LA, she didn't know that he was like this really big K-pop star in Korea. And so then it's about how she goes to Korea and then they meet again. And it's like this really cute, really soft romance that I just like, uh, it just warmed my whole heart. This is one that I can see myself rereading again just because it was so freaking cute and it was so easy to get through. And I'm obsessed with this cover. Like I literally want to buy this book just so I can put it up on my bookshelves and be like look at how cute it is. So yeah nobody is more surprised or shocked than I am that I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like I just really enjoyed myself reading this. And then the next book was the first book that I read for the sci-fi reading vlog that I did this month and it was Mickey 7. Oh my gosh what a fun time this book was. Also side note no I didn't even realize when I was reading this book that it's currently getting adapted into a movie as we speak with Robert Pattinson to star as the lead and Bong Joon-ho directing it. Oh my gosh. Okay, Bong Joon-ho is the director of Parasite, which if y'all know, that's one of my top tier favorite movies of all time. Like, Bong Joon-ho can do no wrong. And he's directing the Mickey 7 adaptation. Like, I can't. I can't. But anyways, uh, Mickey 7. It was a super fun time. This is a sci-fi book that kind of feels, it feels similar to, like, Dark Matter, kind of, and, like, Project Hail Mary. It gave me similar vibes. I feel like if you're a fan of Andy Weir's writing, you should definitely check this one out, because the main character definitely gave me, like, a character, like, he felt like he was written by Andy Weir. This book is a super fun time because we're following this guy named Mickey who, you know, he signs up for this space mission where he's gonna have to be the one that's like the sacrifice in the group. So like if they're doing a very dangerous mission and the survival rate of doing it is very low, they'll just like send him out to do it because he agrees to be cloned. So like if something happens to him and he gets killed, there's gonna be a machine that just like spits out another Mickey, right? <laughs> and so the premise of this book is that his character like signs up so that he can be immortal and do these deadly missions for this crew. And so in this book, we're following Mickey 7, who is like the seventh version of Mickey because he's died six times already for this crew. And this book is just so humorous. It's so entertaining. And like the main premise of like what's happening happening in this story is that they think that Mickey Seven died when he was on his like last little mission that he did, but he didn't. He survived and then he comes back to the ship and Mickey Eight is already there and they're like bitch what the fuck like what and so now there's two mickeys and the crew doesn't know about it the crew doesn't know and they're like what the fuck are we gonna do and it's just so funny it's so unique it's just such a good time this book is just so like i don't know it's lighthearted, but it also has some good sci-fi moments in it too like it's just a fun time i gave this book four stars it was fun and then i read the end of men for that sci-fi reading vlog which this book was also very interesting this one's kind of like a sci-fi post-apocalyptic book because we're following uh, this world where there's this virus that only affects men and it's really interesting because we only follow from the perspective of women in this book and Mostly all of the women that we're following that are like the main characters in this book are you know Either nurses doctors, you know people working on the vaccine like politicians like we're following women who are you know in power during this Pandemic it's scary to read during a pandemic, you know like it is because it's very familiar. You know, a lot of it does feel very familiar with like the panic and the like unknown things about the pandemic. So it does feel kind of scary. But at the same time, like this book was just so interesting. I feel like this book is actually a really interesting discussion and look at what the world would be like if men didn't exist. And it's kind of a discussion about how, you know, men are in so many different positions of power, like how, you know, they talk about 87% of surgeons or something like that are men or like 80% of people in politics are men or you know different things like that And so it's actually a really interesting look at what the world would be like if women were more in these positions of power Because men aren't there to be you know, I don't know I definitely had my like little nitpicks about this book Like I really wish we had just gotten more like less of the sci-fi side Which I know sounds stupid because it's a sci-fi book But I wish we had the point of view of like the everyday people living through this pandemic as opposed to like the the doctors or the you know people that know a lot about what's going on but I just really enjoyed this one I do think it had way too many point of views so it kind of struggled with making me care about any of the characters but the concept was really freaking cool so I gave this one four stars and then the last sci-fi book that I read for that is this one called I'm waiting for you and other stories this one's uh, by this Korean author it's this uh, sci-fi like collection of short stories and I didn't realize that there's actually only three short stories in this collection sadly though I ended up DNFing the middle like okay 
because there's only three sh short stories, right? And I ended up DNFing the middle short story because it was so freaking long and boring. And so I really only read the first short story and the last short story, which was kind of cool because they were connected in a way because the first short story in this collection is called I'm Waiting For You. And it's from the point of view of this astronaut who's like writing to his future wife because when he he's going on this space mission and when he returns to Earth, they're going to be married. And so he's like writing to her saying like, you know, and we get the entire short story is told in letters that he's sending to her over a period of time. And it was just so beautiful and such a gorgeous short story. Like I loved it so much. And then it's kind of cool because the last collection of short stories in the book is the wife's or like his girlfriend's response to him. So like we get her letters that she sends back to him and it's just beautiful. I also love that the author included, you know, a little story at the end about why these stories were written in the first place. I just thought that that was like such a cute bonus thing to know. And I don't know, so even though I DNF'd the middle one because the middle short story was very like high fantasy and I just could not for the life of me get into it. But um, just based on those other two short stories, I feel like I have to give this whole collection like three stars. All right, the next book I read this month is Black Girls Must Be Magic by Jane Allen. And this is the sequel to Black Girls Girls Must Die Exhausted, which was one of my favorite books that I read last year. And this one, I don't know why, I didn't realize that this was going to be a literal sequel. For some reason, I thought that we were going to be following somebody else in this book, but we're following the same character from the first book, and this is like a continuation of her story. I still enjoyed it because I do really like this protagonist. I like her job, you know, like she, she works for the TV news station, if you didn't know, and that's just something that I discovered about myself that I love reading about characters who work for like a news station. I think it's like one of my favorite things. But unfortunately this one wasn't as great for me as the first book or at least I just didn't enjoy it as much as the first book because I can't stand Mark. Okay Mark is kind of like her boyfriend, like her on and off boyfriend throughout this series and I just I can't stand him and he really like brought this book down for me. Every time his character was like in a scene I was just like like so annoyed. So because of that, I ended up giving this one three stars. And then I ended up reading One Italian Summer by Rebecca Surley. And this is one that I, I did listen to the audiobook for this from my library. And if you didn't know, Lauren Graham from Gilmore Girls, she actually narrates this audiobook, which is like super fun. I mean, I haven't really watched Gilmore Girls, but I'm just familiar with Lauren Graham and I really like the sound of her voice. So it was very pleasant. Uh, you know, it's another surprisingly emotional um, book from Rebecca Surley because we're following this woman who her mother has read recently just passed away. Her mother had always talked about wanting to go on this trip with her to Italy and like she always wanted to do this girl's trip with her and so after her mother dies she decides to go to Italy and like take this trip that her mom had always wanted her to take with her and when she goes to Italy it's almost like she fucking like transports through time or something because then she meets her mom when her mom is like her age or like younger than her. And it's about how she gets to like spend the summer with her mom who's like younger and like she gets to learn more about her mom. And this book is just, it's so beautiful, you know, because I feel like as someone who's like really close to my mom, I was like, <laughs> fuck it was like sad you know it just like really hit me i don't know like i definitely had my issues with this book this main character at times was a little frustrating or like some of the decisions or things she was saying i was like what are you talking about girl like what but also i just i love the vibe of this book you know like i i just think rebecca surly I don't know, there's something about her books that I just really enjoy. I like how she has mostly contemporary stories that just feel like a slight touch of some kind of like science-y, time travel-y kind of shit. Because this is the same author as In Five Years, which is a book that I <laughs> freaking loved when I read it a couple years ago. But yeah, I don't know, I enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars, like it wasn't my favorite thing ever, but it was beautiful and it touched me. And then the next book that I read this month was Sundial by Catriona Ward. This is the same author as The Last House on Needless Street. And this is a book that I read, I actually actually did an entire dedicated reading vlog for this on my Patreon, so I'll have that linked down below if you want to check it out. And this was, I think it was a really good book actually to do for a Patreon dedicated vlog because I had so much to talk about with this book, but also like I did not understand like half the shit that I read in this book. Like this book went way over my head, like oh my gosh. So this book, it's kind of like this horror mystery kind of novel that we're following this woman and her daughter. It, it actually kind of reminds me of The Push, if I'm being honest. Like the beginning of this book reminds me so much of The Push because we have this mother-daughter relationship, you know, where the mother just doesn't really feel connected with one of her daughters. Like one of the daughters, she's just always kind of like, why is she like this? And like, I don't really recognize this person. And like, I don't know if I'm fit to to be her mother. It's very much like that kind of vibe and it's like very intense, you know, like this book is just 
all kinds of triggers like oh my gosh the main story is that she decides to take her daughter back to this place called sundial which is where she grew up that's kind of like in the desert she does that because she feels like her daughter is kind of like violent or like she has these weird like violent tendencies and she's trying to get to the bottom of it so she actually takes her to the desert to this place called sundial where she's going to try to figure out like what's going on with her daughter and this book was just it was so interesting i loved the first half okay the first half was like freaking chef's kiss god tier the writing is so good like katriana ward is an incredible writer okay like her writing is amazing it sucks you in immediately it just made me feel so many things like her writing is like visual like i don't even know how to describe it it's so good but then the ending of this book i okay i was sitting there so fucking confused like i had no idea what I just read and it was frustrating but it was also exciting because like I do like books where you kind of have to like figure shit out on your own but also it just went way over my head and I was really confused and I was not having a fun time and so I don't know I ended up giving this one three stars it went to places where I was not really expecting it to go like it was just like what kind of hard to follow and then also I wasn't a huge fan of about like halfway through the book we do get these like flashback chapters from this main character's childhood they were just not interesting to me like really not interesting I was like so bored reading those chapters so I ended up giving this one three stars but I am definitely interested in checking out anything this author writes in the future because my god you like the writing amazing. The next book that I read this month is Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon and this is one that I listened to the audiobook for this one. I actually listened to this entire audiobook in one day because I started listening to it on a day where I was like cleaning the apartment and starting to like go through shit to get rid of and before I knew it hours had passed and I just listened to this all day. <laughs> and there's so much that I love about this book because I mean this is the same author as the X-Talk which was like one of my favorite romances that I read last year so I had pretty high hopes for this one too. I love that this one also takes place in Seattle I love that we're following a TV meteorologist and a sports reporter and I love that it's kind of about them like scheming to get their bosses together to make their lives easier. It's very much like the premise of that Netflix movie set it up. Like it's very similar. I also love the different representation in this book because the love interest is a fat single dad and then they're both Jewish as well. So there's like a ton of different representation also in this book. And I also really appreciate the very, uh, you know, realistic look at depression because our main character Ari she deals with a lot of depression in this book and it's very you know on page like we get to see a lot of what she's going through and like conversations with her therapist and I just thought it was really well done you know I just thought it was great so I ended up giving this one four out of five stars like the only reason why I ended up knocking off a star is because I wasn't a huge fan of the conflict that was happening at the end of this book and because I didn't love this one as passionately as I loved the X talk but I still had such a good time reading this book and I just really love this author's writing style like I will read any romances that this author comes out with because I just adore them. And then the next book that I read this month was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This book, oh, oof, oof. Don't cancel me, but I was not a fan of this book. <laughs> okay, nobody wanted to love this book more than I did, okay? This book sounded like it was gonna be right up my alley. I was so on board with it. I thought I was gonna love it, and I ended up giving it two stars. This book, I mean, the main premise is that we're following this girl, you know, who's in the present day is 2017, and her name is Shay, and she runs this kind of, you know, blog that's like a true crime blog called The Book of Cold Cases, and then it's about this woman from 1977, and her name is Beth. She was accused of murder in 1977 and she was like accused of murdering these men. And so in this book the main premise that's happening is this woman named Shay in the present day in 2017. She meets Beth from like back in 1977 who was murdering men and she asks if she can interview her for her true crime blog and then Beth is like yeah sure. So then this is kind of a story about how she's going to be interviewing her and kind of getting the truth of like what happened back then. And I don't know there was something about the way that this book was written that just really irked me for some reason, you know? The way that <laughs> this girl Shay described Beth was just like really obnoxious, you know? Because every time she mentions her, she just has to describe like how sexy she is. Like she's just so sexy. She has this red hair and she wears these trench coats and she just has these eyes that are just like full of lust and she's just so sexy all the time. Like she's just so sexual. Like nobody can understand her. She's not like the other girls. She's just so hot. And like it was literally like that. Like I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like the writing just felt like that constantly and I was so annoyed. I was like, girl, we get it. Oh my god, Beth is a hottie. We get it. But like, I just got so frustrated. It almost felt like, you know how men tend to write women in that kind of way? Like, oh my god, she's just so hot. Like, she just woke up and she's just so hot. Like, it kind of felt 
like a man had written this woman like I don't know that's the vibe I was getting from it I was like this is so annoying but then also like there were some things that I liked about this book which is why it did get two stars from me and not one because I did like the uh you know kind of almost creepy like haunted house atmosphere that was happening through some parts of this book I was like okay sign me up but then also like <laughs> I don't know there's like a moment in the book like about halfway through where we get revealed like what happened like we get revealed the twist like the twist is revealed to us and then the second half of the book is just kind of finding out why it happened in that way and I was just so bored like after the halfway point I was like okay I don't care anymore like I already know what happened now and I don't care and I just wasn't a huge fan of these characters I also ended up reading The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley which if you didn't know this is our book troop book club pick for the month of March and I will have just done the live show with Lexi if you missed it I'll have the live show linked down below but this one you know we're following this woman named Jess who she's going to stay in Paris with her brother Ben but when she shows up at his Paris apartment Ben is missing Ben is gone and she doesn't know what's what's going on she doesn't know what the fuck and so this book is kind of about Jess you know trying to figure out what the fuck happened to her brother Ben you know like what's going on and uh we follow from a lot of different point of views of the people that are living in in this apartment building and they all kind of have like some kind of secretive things going on like they all knew Ben and none of them liked Ben and there was just this whole thing and I don't know I personally I just thought this book was so much fun okay I had a blast reading this book Lucy Folly like there's something about Lucy Folly's writing that I just really click with and also the plot twist at the end of this book like what excuse me like I was screaming I was screaming over the ending of this book like I was so shook you know immediately upon finishing this book I gave it five stars like immediately just because of the feeling like you know the high that I got from reading this I was just so freaking excited by that ending but honestly like looking back on it I'm like okay reel it back like <laughs> reel back the excitement because there were some moments of this book that were kind of slow like I will admit there's like a good solid almost like 100 pages where like not a lot was happening and it was just really slow and I was like okay come on like let's pick up the story here but I don't know like I don't have too much nitpicks about this book so like I do still think it falls somewhere between a four and a four and a half star for me but I just had a really great time reading this and I, I can I see all of my friends like hating on this recently and I don't really understand it like I had such a fun time reading this and then I read uh The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff and <laughs> This is another thriller that I wanted to love that I ended up not really enjoying and I'm really sad about it. And uh, this is one that I did listen to the audiobook for this one as well. Um, this one, it's about this woman who receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm. Like, does that not sound like everything? We do get this one point of view that's from like August 2000. And then we get a present day point of view. And then we also get these chapters that are just like in italics and it's kind of unclear at the start like whose point of view you're even following but then eventually as things get revealed to you you can kind of figure out whose point of view you're following but I don't know I feel like this book uh it's it was pretty average for a thriller for me I feel like if you read a lot of thrillers this one's probably not going to be that surprising just because it was a little predictable you know like the big twist was a little predictable there was something towards the end that i thought was a little shocking that i didn't see coming i liked that we were following a true crime writer in this book you know i thought that was like a cool element to it and i did really enjoy the kind of like snowy atmosphere that was in this book like i i did have a good time with that but otherwise, I feel like this was just fine, you know? It was very average, nothing I'm gonna remember. Like, I'm already starting to forget the little details of this book, even though it's only been like a week and a half. This was like a three star for me, honestly, probably more like a 2.5. All right, and then the next five books that I read this month were all a part of the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abby, and I did an entire reading vlog for this thriller series. If you missed it, I'll have it linked down below. I really credit my friends, uh, Katie and Mike <laughs> to getting me into this book series and making me want to do this reading vlog this month. And honestly, I'm so glad that I did because this series was just so fun. Like, I just look back on this with very fond memories already because, you know, this series, it's a little cringy, you know, it's a little over the top. And it's kind of like a romantic thriller series where we're following this girl named Lena, who is a female serial killer. And it's kind of about her taking revenge on these men who have done something pretty awful to her uh, 10 years ago. We find out later on, like much later on in the series, what actually happened to her. But, uh, you know, you just kind of know the very gist, the very basics at the start of this book. Then in the meantime, it's also a romance that's happening between her and this FBI agent named Logan. And of course, it's the FBI agent that is assigned to her case because of course it is. And uh, to be honest, 
this book series, um, it starts off pretty rough in my opinion. It starts off pretty slow, pretty boring. I did not care about Logan and the romance. You don't read this book for the romance, you know what I'm saying? Like the romance, it's just, it's not good. It's pretty cringy, at least for me. I know there's probably some people out there who really enjoy this romance, but for me it was so insta-love and just so like I did not understand them together at all. I think the first two books in this series for me were probably like two stars. I just wasn't a huge fan of those first two books. I thought they were pretty slow, even though I will say I really liked the way that the author ends the first two books because she leaves you hanging, you know? You're like, what the, what the fuck? Like, I gotta immediately read the next one. And if you didn't know, this series of five books, each one of the books is only about a hundred pages. Um, it has like the breakdown right here at the start, and so it's really easy to fly through this entire series because this whole collection is only about 680 pages for five books. So like it's easy to binge this series, you know? It's easy to want to get through all of them really fast, but the first two books are not that great. The third book, I ended up giving three stars. Like it was definitely an improvement and I was interested in what was happening with the characters and then book four was probably like a four star for me like book four was a lot of fun like oh my god and book four though also has a ton of triggers for like really dark shit okay like book four is where like a lot of things get revealed and it's just a lot it's very heavy it's very dark and it's like oh so intense and then book five oh my god book five uh, the finale Oh my gosh, like 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like I had so much fun reading that final book. Like it was so satisfying. Everything was perfectly planned. Oh my god, it was crazy. It was totally fucking crazy. Like you kind of have to, you know, suspend your disbelief a little bit reading that last book, but it was just such a fun time. I didn't care. It was so much fun. And the epilogue of this series is like one of <laughs> my favorite epilogues. Like it was just so satisfying. I was like, yes, bitch. So yeah, I had a really great time reading this book series. It's not a perfect book series, you know? I mean, as I said, the first two books were two stars. I don't even know if I would recommend the first two books to be honest, but they're kind of necessary to read so you get the full satisfaction of everything. I will warn you though too, I didn't even mention, but the writing is pretty bad. Like the writing is, you know, it's terrible. It's like, it's written kind of like a bad fan fiction or something, but you just read this book for pure entertainment. You know, like that's what you're here for. If you're here for like an entertaining thrill ride, then I would recommend it. All right, so the 22nd book that I read this month was Delilah Green Doesn't Care. And this is by Ashley Herring Blake. This one, it's a female-female romance between these two women. Um, we're following Delilah Green, who, you know, she lives in New York and she has this photography business and she has all these tattoos, you know, like she's totally a bad bitch. And then it's kind of a romance that starts to happen between her and this woman named Claire, who's a single mother that has an 11-year-old daughter and she also has a bookstore. This book had all of the ingredients to be one of my all-time favorite romances. Like, I really wanted to love this book. But sadly, I felt like this one was just okay for me. I ended up giving this one three stars. I had a good time reading it, but also there was just something about this book I didn't fully connect with, and I didn't love these characters with the burning passion the way that I wanted to. I don't know what it was about this book. I feel like, I mean, for starters, I feel like this book is a little too long for the story, you know? I mean, we're talking, it's nearly 400 pages, and I just don't think there's ever a reason for a romance to be that long. Like, there's just no reason. And also, like, I don't know, as much as I loved the romance that was happening, like at times, like at times I was really shipping it and at times I was like, hell yes. But then there were other times in the book where I was just kind of like bored. I don't know, there was just something about this book. It was just missing that spark for me that I really crave in romance books. But I am not writing off this author completely, you know, because I know that this book has a sequel, I think, coming out later this year. And so I do think I'm still interested in checking out the sequel because I'm thinking maybe it's just these characters in particular that I didn't vibe with for some reason. But I do like the, you know, overall writing style. I like the way that this author writes the romances. They're super cute and like bubbly and fun. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I expected to love this more than I did, but it was a three star for me. It was fine. And then the last book that I read this month was the one star. It was the one star book for this month and it was uh, The Best Day. <laughs> and I feel bad, you know, because my friends actually just sent me this book off my Amazon wish list, um, my friends Zach and Danielle, because I was in a podcast episode with them recently, which I'll have their podcast linked down below if you missed it, but they did this really fun episode with me where they did kind of like a Q&A and we also talked about thrillers and stuff, which was really fun. But anyways, they sent this book to me off my Amazon wish list after we did that episode and then I was so excited that I read it immediately because my library had the audiobook and it was like a match made in heaven. <sighs> God, I ended up giving this one star. I am just tired, you know? I'm tired 
of reading thrillers like this. This entire book is told from the point of view of this man named Paul who has this wife and these two sons and he's just like one of those toxic men that is just so frustrating to read about because he just thinks that you know his wife and his sons are just gonna follow his like strict rules that he has for them and that he knows better than any of them and it was just very frustrating to read from his point of view for this entire book and not to mention like just that but like the writing style is just so dense like we just get paragraphs after paragraphs of like all of his thoughts about how like he's just the best like he's such a good husband to them and he's such a good provider and he's taking her away on this weekend like all of this book takes place within 24 hours because he's planning the best day ever for her and he's like taking her on this car trip they're gonna go to this place and the entire book takes place like hour by hour you know breakdowns of like 11 30 a.m i was just so bored you know like i was so freaking bored and it wasn't like a fun time reading this you know because sometimes you read from the point of view of somebody who's really annoying and it's just kind of fun to see into the mind of somebody like that but this was not fun this was just like obnoxious as things start happening in the plot i just feel like i've read a million thrillers like this one like i've read so many thrillers that are just like this one and i'm so tired of this like kind of trope and like premise in thriller books i know it's like maybe it's my fault like maybe i should have looked more into like what this book is actually about before i read it but i just like oh i'm tired i just don't really like this in thrillers it's so annoying it's so obnoxious i don't like following characters like paul i'm just so tired of reading about you know like misogynistic piece of shit men who are just so annoying like somebody i saw somebody on goodreads say that this main dude protagonist paul reminded them a lot of donald trump and like you know what? You hit the nail on the head for me and I think <laughs> like oh my god that just makes it even worse like ugh, so frustrating. Those are all the books that I read in the month of March. Sorry that we ended on such a negative note there but I feel like March was going so well for me you know and up until I read that last book there and I was like what the hell is this? But yeah I mean if I'm being honest I haven't read anything in like the last three or four days because I've just been watching so many BTS music videos and interviews so honestly like who knows how April is gonna go you know <laughs> because April I have so much going on in the month of April. I am moving in the month of April and then I'm also you know falling down the BTS rabbit hole as we speak so uh yeah hopefully let's cross our fingers and hope I can finish a few books in the month of April I will still have an April TBR going up in a couple of days because I do have some reading plans and some things that I'm hoping to make happen in the month of April but yeah that's a wrap on March let me know what your thoughts are let me know if you read any of these books that I talked about in this video and what your thoughts are on them and also just let me know like how did your March go like how was your reading month did you read anything that you absolutely loved? Is there anything new going on in your life that you're very excited about? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.